What is up, Wholesale Two Million family? We back with another subscriber first wholesale deal interview today. I got my man Iman to come on to share with you guys how he closed his first wholesale deal for twelve for over twelve thousand dollars. He's a truck driver, and if he can do this. I'm telling you, any one of you can do this. It all comes down to is how bad do you want to succeed, okay? So if you have what it takes, take a pen, piece of paper. Iman is going to share with you exactly the entire process of how he got his first wholesale deal. There is no sales pitch or anything like that. Um, You just need to take notes. And after this, put in the W-O-R-K, and you too, my friend, will be able to close your first deal. Everything that you need to know about wholesaling, closing your first deal, or you're trying to scale your business up, where you have a system and a team in place, um, making between ten thousand to hundred thousand per month. I share exactly the entire thing with you on my YouTube channel. All right, you just need to basically put in the time, put the missing link, put the puzzle together, because there's over nine hundred videos showing you exactly how to do with sellers, buyers, market your deals, um, signing the contract, and all of that. Now, for those of you listen, if you like, hey Kong, I don't have the time. Uh, I don't have the time to go through all the video uh, to put everything together. Then just go to my website. Go to WTMFam.com. Check out the course I got for you and uh, see if it's a good fit for you. But uh, everything that you need, instead of putting it, uh, putting the time, putting it all together for you, um, go to WTMFam.com. Check it out, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to uh, help you with that. But no further ado, put your hand and your thumbs together and help me welcome Iman. What's going on, bro? What's going on, Kirk? How you doing, man? Good, 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 man, dude. Thank you so much yeah. for taking the time um, to jump on to do this with me, man, and uh, just basically giving it back to uh, the uh, the people, man. Not a problem. Not a problem yeah. at all. So, Iman, let's jump into it, man. Uh, let's share with everybody a little bit about your background, what you're currently doing, how you discover wholesaling, and obviously, let's and then we can talk about your first uh, deal. Background: I'm a truck driver. Um, I do that for a living. Been doing it for the last 14 years. Ooh, okay. Um, uh, slash professional prize fighter um just retired from that like maybe 10 years i've retired from that but maybe 10 years ago picked up truck driver driving and uh been doing this ever since but i i fell in love with uh real estate by like everybody else watching carlton sheets dean graziazzi uh watching you know just youtube and 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 finding out you know what this wholesale thing was um i found that out by going to a thin mirror uh, um, seminar. They wanted to upsell me on everything. You know, you go there for the free course. Yeah. You, they, they upsell you to the $500. You, you pay for the $500. And all of a sudden, it's $30,000 $30, you got to come out your pocket for. I'm like, I, this ain't no way that, you know, I, why should I have to pay this money? So I got introduced to, to wholesale through that. Um, start reading books. I'm not really a big book reader. So, uh, same here. Went to YouTube University. Good the first, for you. The first, uh, Videos that I seen was yours, of course. Oh, thank the you, bro. Thank yeah, you. No doubt. Uh, the Flip Man was another one. Brent yeah. Daniels was another one, and uh, uh, Max Maxwell. So yeah. I watch all you guys, all you guys, man. Every day I watch these videos. My wife like, "What are you doing? Why are you up so early in the morning watching these videos?" Now she knows why I do it. This that that check. That's why. Good, good for you, man. Hey, dude, I want to say thank you so much for the loss of. Uh, for the support, and I want to say congrats, dude. Congrats for sticking with it. it. Thank you very much, man. Yeah, congrats for putting in the WRK and I'm making it happen. It's because now. of you, Carl. It's because of you, man. Oh, bro, you, thank you so you, much, you, man. Listen, this, this, I'm not just saying this because everybody says you say put in that work. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Um, once upon a time, I don't know if you can tell, I had that 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 you know stuttering thing too. Um. Mm through you know rehab and just going through you know different things i'm stuttering now but uh i got i got over it but um you, like you said if, it, if i can do it anybody can do it anybody can do it i'm a truck driver full time Woo! 40 50 hours a week 40 50 hours a week if i can do this you can do it good for Trust you me. man so now um um iman how do you so how how do you find the time um how do you find the time to actually uh, do it, man? During the week, it's tough. I'm not going to lie. During the week, it's tough because I'm on the road. Some days I'm home every day. I, I just got back from New Jersey just today. We was out on the road for like, you know, three days. Uh, it's hard. So I watch YouTube all day. But, you know, on the weekends, me and my wife, we jump in the car, 
drive for dollars, brother. Drive for dollars. Driving for dollars, man. Nice. All day so, long. <clears throat> so, uh, so, Iman, you and the wife are working uh, at this together. I mean, she helps me out because she sees that I'm really passionate about it. Good. She doesn't. I mean, I, and, and I definitely give her money. You know, as far as gas, you know, your wife always likes money. But uh, no, I mean, we're not really partners, but she's always gonna be my partner. You know what I mean? Yep. I hear you, man. Good. Good for you, dude. So basically, Iman. So through Monday, so Monday through Friday, Monday through Friday, you kind of do your whole truck driving, watching YouTube, yes, education, and then and then on the weekend, you guys just gonna go and drive for dollars. Driving for dollars. I mean, I, I I did get the courage up to do, you know, uh, cold calling, but yep. that's not really my thing. I'm gotcha. driving for dollars and, and sending out postcards. And if you're really interested, I don't like hassling people. If you're interested in selling me your property, you're going to call me back. So I yeah. send out postcards all the time. I got you. I got you. So for those of you, if you're new, you probably don't, if you don't know what driving for dollar is, um, this is, this is the, this is the company that, um, um, Iman uses do from uh, DoMachine.com. Uh, if you if you use my link DoMachine.com forward slash WTM, you get a, a seven days free trial with them, a forty dollar credit just to start out. You can use it. You can use up the seven days to forty dollars, and after that, if you don't like it, you can disconnect. It costs you nothing, but at least it, it gives you a little bit of money to actually get yes, rocking sir. and rolling. So now on the weekend, you drive for dollars. Um, how many hours are you uh, spending driving for dollars? We go out maybe Saturday. We spend maybe not not very not not too much time. Maybe okay. two two three hours just driving around on a Saturday and Sunday. Okay, so Iman, let's talk about your first wholesale deal, then, man. How do you yes, sir. How do you found the seller? How do you get him contact? The conversation and all that, bro. Uh, well, basically, like I said, I was you know the drive for dollars deal machine. I was sending out postcards. I, I, and this 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 deal is crazy because where I work at driving to my job i see this house all the time and mm. it looked vacant i know it looked vacant trash is always outside on the curb it's never gone it's always out in the front i'm like yo is this house vacant come to find out it's the three family house it's it's tenants on the second and third floor but the first floor is vacant so i just took a picture of it in my deal machine app start sending out postcards um and in uh may I got a phone call. I, I normally don't answer my phone, but I just answered it. And it was the seller of, it was the owner of the house. Oh. He was uh t telling me how he got my postcard and how he was in, may, maybe uh, possibly interested in selling. And we talked, we had a conversation for about a you know hour and a half, two hours. He told me what uh, about the property, how much he wanted. I told him, you know, uh, I can probably make it work with those numbers that he, he was giving me. Uh, and then at, at the end of the conversation, he told me about another property that he had. But, but this property, he had initially he wanted um, 170 for it. Okay. Uh, and and, and the, I said, you know, I could possibly make work because the ARV was between 225 and 230. I said the numbers was kind of high, but I posted it on Facebook Marketplace anyway on the host on the wholesale um all the wholesale sites on Facebook, and I was getting some 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 traction other people saying that the price needs to be a little lower other people but i did have i did get somebody to to bite it and uh it didn't work out and then um i didn't hear from that homeowner for a while because his girlfriend had caught she was going through a cancer scare um and then in august he called me back He's like, listen, I'm sorry for not calling you. I was going through some things with my with my family, but uh, I'm ready to sell now. But the only thing is, um, I have to go up on the price. So he went from I want to say um, that 190 up to like two two ten two fifteen. Okay, so like, you know, I, so Iman, I, I don't mean to interrupt, man. So the first time the, the first time you guys talked, did you get did you get the prop in the contract? I did not. Oh, okay. So he, I did you not, did not he got, did, okay. Ho, ho, okay, hold on. Put it under contract for some reason, but uh, I didn't okay, get it under contract the first time. Gotcha. Okay. So you didn't put it under contract, but the asking price is 170, you said, right? That's how much he wants? Yeah, about 170. Yes, sir. Okay. So, and you mentioned that since you didn't even have it under contract, you just decided to put it out there um, on the Facebook marketplace, the house, the whole selling houses, full time Facebook group, and all that. What were you, what, what were you putting it out uh, for, or how much? I was putting out there for one ninety. 
Okay, so he was asking 170. So you figure, hey, let me throw it out there for 190 and see anybody would be interested, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, um, Iman, did you put the address or, or how did you play that? I did not. I I put up, the, um, you know, it was a three family. Yep. Uh, but this 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 property is, is kind of funny. So you gotta like just hear me out on this one. It's a three family in the front. Okay. Second floor and third floor is being rented, and yep. they have a first floor that was completely vacant that needs to be renovated. But in the back of this property, there's another property. It's a single family that was being rented, and uh, he was getting, I want to say, eight fifty for that. But so it's two properties okay. on one piece of land that came together. But got every, it. Yeah, they came together. Got it. Okay. So for those of you who's watching or who's listening. One thing you got to understand that, you know, um, obviously Iman didn't have it under contract. Typically, legally, you cannot market the property if you don't have it under contract. But mm. Iman didn't put the property address. It's basically like a, basically you're just put it, putting it out there like a ghost ad. A ghost right? ad, hey, right. Yeah, like, like a ghost ad. So I, I think that um, is okay because a lot of time maybe you're trying to understand the market. You're trying to, you know, put some buyers together to see kind of – where they're at in price or what price they're buying it at. So um, for those of you, if you're starting out, uh, putting ghosts out on Craigslist is also very good for you to start get, um, building up your cash buy list. So you it, so you basically, you don't have to have a property on a contract. You just post some random property that you just made, make up, all right? And then when the buyer calls you, you said, hey, I'm currently have that property on a contract with another buyer, but I love to collect your information, your name, your phone number, what type of property you're looking to buy, how quickly you will, you can close, you know, so you can vet your buyers and qualify and build a relationship and then start putting on your a buyers list. Because if you don't have a property, um, you know, it, it's hard for you to start getting buyers. But if you put a random, like a ghost ad, once again, it's like a ghost ad. Um, I, di I did this when I first started. I put a bunch of ghost ads on Craigslist and I get a bunch of people call me. I qualify them and then I start building up my cash buyers list. So, um, so Iman, so you put it out for 190 okay? And uh, you're getting a, a lot of buyers that say it was too high. Too high. Okay. So, so what did you, so what did you do after that? Well, basically, uh, I, I, I didn't hear from the seller uh, for for a while, so I just mm. let that that ad run, and as it's running, I'm writing down everybody's you know email, telephone number, but I didn't hear from the buyer for a while for for whatever reason. But they come to find out, his I didn't hear from him because his girlfriend was going through a right. cancer scare. Right. Um. Then he finally got back and he in uh right. in August and he said, "Yo, I'm ready." Okay. But I got to go up on the price because okay. because of the hardships. So I said, sure. "You know what? What you asking for?" And he said, "Um." Uh, I want to say 215, 220. Uh, but, you know, I told him I can't, I can't do that. It's kind of high because, you know, I put it out there. For, I didn't tell him I put it out there for this right. Way, but I knew it was kind of hot. Um, could we, could, could you do any better than that? I got that from, from the flip man. Could you do any better than that? Um, and we, we talked, we negotiated, we're back and forth, back and forth. And finally, I got it from 215, 220 down to 200, 200 even. Okay. So now and, at uh, this time, at, at this time yes, around, did you did you put under did you put the prop under contract? Oh, qu quick, fast, and hurry. Yeah, so you put it under contract for two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand, yes, sir. Okay, so keep going. Then I put it out for uh, two fifty. Wait, 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 uh, wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. Everybody probably want to know. So how much how much is the earnest money did you put down? With the seller? Yeah. Uh, absolutely nothing. Nothing. Okay, so you just got him to kind of sign the contract. No, no Your earnest dollars, money. Yes, and I say, and I heard this too. If the, if they don't ask about about it, then you, I mean, you don't really have to tell them about it. But uh, correct. I didn't. I he didn't say anything about it. I already went to the deposit, so I didn't say anything about it. Um, I knew about it, but I didn't say nothing. So we got it under right. contract for, for two hundred. Yeah. Okay. Yes, so good. Good. Okay. So for if you're listening. Okay, watching this. So typically, there has to be an exchange in money. Typically, it needs to be to be at least I would say ten dollars, but it could be a dollar. All right, there needs to be an exchange in money for the contract to become legit, to become legal. Yeah. Just so you know, all right. Most seller that you deal with typically direct 
dealing directly with the seller, they never really asked about the earnest money. They never right. really know about the earnest money or any of that. Typically, the one that asks, they have dealt with, uh, they probably dealt with a, a wholesaler before where they went through with a wholesaler and it didn't work out or another investors or they are a realtor. So they understand. So they know or they work with a realtor before. But typically, most seller that we deal with directly never ask about the earnest money. OK, they, they never really ask about it. But I'm just sharing with you. Typically, you want to put at least a dollar, ten dollars in the contract. So that way. Uh, when you send into a title company, you drop off that uh, that earnest uh, deposit with the seller. The contract becomes uh, legit. So if that's which means if the seller decided to back out, uh, basically he or she can't because you got you got a a bound contract with them. But if you don't right. drop off, if you and let, let, let's just say that you know you sign a contract, no earnest money, and the seller founds another buyer go behind your back. You didn't drop off any earnest money. That contract is it's 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 like non-existent, right? It's not even uh, a real contract, just so you guys know, okay? But okay, so go uh, go ahead, bro. So lock it up on a contract for 200000 Okay, what's next? So then I put it out there uh, for two twenty five. dollars Okay. Um, and I had one guy come out and, and, and look at it and say he wanted it. We got the contract signed with him for the two twenty five. dollars um, But come to find out, he was another wholesaler. Wanting to join venture this sure. contract. I didn't okay. know. Um, so once I'm like, you know, I, I found this out, and like, hey, you know, like he said I knew, but I really didn't. But he, he got on the I got on the contract with him. Um, they couldn't get a loan on, on the property. They couldn't get a loan or uh so they couldn't close the deal. So now I'm I'm stuck trying to find somebody to to, to wholesale this deal to. Um so after that contract basically ran out, I go back to the the seller and, and, and tell him like this contract is about to expire. I know we we built a uh, rapport. Um, I'm you know you know I'm serious about this deal and I really do want it. Um, just give me another chance. Give me another thirty days to get this thing sold for you. Um, he gave me another thirty days. We got another contract signed. Um, I put okay. it back on. Go ahead. Okay, Iman. I want to break this down a little bit so people understand yes, here. Yes, so you got another wholesaler came in and said, "Hey, he would say he, he would do it for two twenty five. Yes, sir. So did you did you guys did you guys sign like uh, an agreement or or was it a verbal? At, at, it was verbal. It was verbal. But once um, he in the once he found a buyer, we we he we put in the contract. Okay, hold on. Okay. So, so he did found a buyer at the two twenty five, yeah. right? Okay, now you sign an assignment agreement with that buyer. With that, with that buyer. Oh, hold on. Uh, and also, a, also a joint venture contract. Correct with the wholesaler. Yes, sir. Okay, so what was what was so basically at this moment here, you you potentially was going to make twenty five k. So right. what was so what was the split with the joint venture? Is it 50 50 or what? 50 50, yes, sir. Okay, 50 50. Got it. Typically, that's how it works. Okay, so it's a 50 50 split with the other wholesaler. So now, my next question to you is that the buyer signs the assignment agreement for 225. What happened? Like the deal fall apart? Yeah, the deal fell apart. Basically, the buyer couldn't, I guess, he couldn't get. I really Finance? didn't understand it. He couldn't get a loan or a hard money loan on that property because it was two properties on uh, one piece of land. And however he did it, they couldn't get a um they couldn't get the right comps on how much the property was worth because it was okay. two properties on one piece of land. Okay, I got you. I got you. So my question to you now is how much how much of a deposit did the buyer put down? Nothing. He didn't put out anything. Okay. You guys, once again, don't ever make this mistakes. When a buyer decided they want to move forward, all right, to buy the property from you, which means they're going to sign an assignment agreement, always, always have them put a non-refundable deposit so that way they have skin in the game. Which the thing means is, they, go ahead. I never, I never, I, I spoke to the, that buyer one time. Yep. I asked the other wholesaler, like, listen, what about the money, honest money, the earnest money deposit? He goes, oh, don't worry about it. We're, we're, he's he's good. We're gonna close the deal. And me being new to the game, I didn't know anything. I just I just okay as long as he's gonna close, we're good. Don't worry about it. Right, right. 
It, so, so listen, when, <clears throat> when you're new into the game, you know, obviously there's a lot of things going on and you're trying to figure everything out. But so that's why we're here to tell you, all right, that you need to make sure that when you have a buyer, that buyer, if it's a legit buyer, trust me, if it's a legit yes. buyer, they yes. will put down a none. I don't even, when yes. I talk to my buyer, I don't even say it's an earnest money deposit. I say it's a none refundable deposit. I oh, need okay. them to understand that if they back out, it will become non refundable. And typically, my average non-refundable deposit is it's it's like right, right around five thousand. Like that's the Jesus. minimum. Oh, yeah, dude. Jesus. Like, dude, that's the Jesus. minimum. That's the minimum that I take. Wow. Dude, bro, I got buyer putting down like 15, 20 G's, no problem. Jesus. So, but how big are the wholesale deals though? You um, get, typically, put... yeah, yeah. Typically, my typically my average wholesale deal is between twenty to twenty five G's. Jesus. Yeah. So, but, I can't so, wait to be like you, Kong. Dude, bro, you, bro, you are gonna get there. It's, it's, it, like, yeah. So, so make sure you, you make sure you have your buyer to have a lot of skin in the game. Listen, I don't care if your, I don't care if your deposit or if your, I don't care if your assignment fee is five thousand. I talk to, once you when you talk to your buyer, just ask them how much can you guys put down. And right. I, once again, I have buyers where I was gonna make five. Um, Five thousand on uh, an assignment fee, and they put down ten thousand dollars, non refundable. You see, Jesus. and now if they back out, guess what? I gotta keep that ten thousand. I'm making 10, more on, on right. that non refundable wow. than my assignment fee. Always make sure that they put uh, down a large sum, so that way yes, they have sir. skin in the game. All right, you guys watch this, you listen to this. That's a must, must, must. If a buyer tells you, I, "I'm gonna close on it," uh, don't worry about it. I don't need, dude. Those are not solid buyers. I'm telling you right now. All right, because I'm on the other side as well. I've bought property from wholesaler and all that. And dude, I come in and I say, okay, hey, let's get this deal done. How much do you need me to put down? Done. Well, because no matter what I'm going to do, if I'm a solid buyer, I'm going to close on the deal anyway. Whether I put 10000 down or 50000 down, all that money is going to go towards my purchase price anyway. Right? So that's why I, so, so I'm telling you. And also, too, is if your buyer is solid, they will tell you they can close within 7 to 15 days. Yeah. If a buyer tells you I need a 30 days, 45 days closing, they're not solid. Typically, that is another wholesaler that's trying to tie the property on a contract and trying to find someone else and assign it over basically yeah. for uh for more money. All yeah. right. A, and, yeah. and and that buyer is um, you know, if that's a buyer, they're basically trying to go and, and get a loan somehow. All right, which means their finance is not it's not in place yet. And you don't want to mess with those kind of buyers because buyers. That are ready to go. Typically, if they get harmony lender, it takes about 15 days, just two weeks, 15 days for them to close on the deal. That's that's the most. Um, there's a buyer that I work with that needs three weeks, but three weeks max. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you're watching this, make sure you take notes on that. Okay. So now, okay. So that buyer back out, and then what happened, bro? So I, I went to the seller. I, I you know we 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 built um you know a little some some mutual respect for each other um right. and i said listen you know that buyer that i brought to the table i told him about the buyer. i said listen i brought him to the table i met him on facebook i really didn't know him i really didn't either he was just the first one to um come to the table as far as like you know me me putting the property out he was the first one to come to the table i said listen but give me another chance okay. i will get this thing done give me another chance give me another 30 days i get this thing done no problem. I got a whole nother list of buyers I can market this thing to and they get it done. I put it on Facebook uh, once again, um, marketplace, but I, I think I added two more marketplaces to it. And within 15 minutes, uh, I had somebody interested in the property. Two people, actually. I said, listen, if you're interested in the property, um, come in on Saturday, we do a walk around. They came in on that Saturday. We walked around. One person was interested he called me on the phone and said listen i know you want um x amount of dollars for it i can't give you that but i can give you this i said so um if you can't well nah it's a little how about you know, he said i can't give you 220 but i can give you 213 okay. how about 215 he said you know what we can do 215 I, I got the contract i got it under contract for 200 i sold the contract for um 215 and made 15,000 in, in the process 
Boom. Okay. So now at this time, now your second time around here, how much earnest the uh, or how much <laughs> non-refundable did your buyer put down? I, I I spoke to my buyer. I told him I said, listen, um, the last guy didn't work out, but I'm gonna need that uh that earnest money deposit. He said it's not a problem. I need that fifteen hundred. He said, well, I I just you know I. I really don't feel like comfortable giving out that much money, fifteen hundred. But I give you a thousand dollars, so I got a thousand dollars earnest money deposit. He wrote out in the check. Gotcha. Boom, and then you guys just close on it. Yes, sir. Good. Okay, so let me teach you guys some negotiating tactic. Okay, because this is what I went through when I first started out. All right, when you, when you're new into the game, you're anxious of getting things done. You don't want to cause an issue with your buyers and this and that. Okay, because you're afraid that oh, if if you ask so many questions or cause an issue that they're going to back out, blah, blah, blah. All right. There's a lot of things that go through. So what you want to do is you want to maintain um, control of the deal. So typically I ask my buyers. So I say, Hey, um, how much of a uh, deposit can you put down? So don't, don't never be the one that mentioned a number first, always be the okay. person that ask them what they can do, what they can put down. And then if they, so typically that, you know, so, cause a lot of times they might, say a number that is a lot larger than what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, you know what? If, if man, if the buyer can put down $2,500, dude, we're golden. But what if you ask them and they're like, hey, uh, I can do 5,000. Boom, right? right. You just got an extra 2,500 bucks. Right. Right. And let's just say if you ask them if they, and if they mention 2,000, well, guess what? They start at 2,000. It doesn't mean you're starting at 2,000. So you can tell them, hey, 2,000 is not going to work. And typically when I negotiate with the seller or with the buyer, I always have a partner in place so that way i'm never the one that's negotiating directly uh with the other person with the buyer so i so basically because when you want when you do that it's it's a it's it's easier to talk to them because then you're not the one who's pressuring them but you're like hey my partner you know typically when we do this kind of deal my partner typically wants you know five thousand dollars uh deposit is that something that you can do all right. So that's how okay. you want to that's how you want to position yourself. Never be the one that negotiated directly with the other person. It just costs too much conflict. So I take yes. that pressure and I put it on my partners or my team or or whatnot. OK, I got you. Yes, sir. Yes. sir. OK, so now my next question to you is that when you when you went back and talked to the seller to ask for more time, did the seller know at this time that you're trying to wholesale the property? He knew from the what? beginning. I told him he knew oh. from the beginning. I told him I made him, I made him aware. I, I mean, I know you don't really. I guess you don't have to, but I made him aware of the. I told him basically, I I just him like I was gonna wholesale it. I said either I'm gonna you know get a hard money loan on it and buy it for myself, or okay. um the kind my contract is assignable. I may assign it to another cash buyer. Okay, and he okay. was cool. He was cool with it. Okay, good. Okay, so uh, so here's where um here's where I want to make sure that you guys understand this. Okay. Is that when you talk to a seller, seller typically don't know what wholesaling is. And when you bring up, hey, I'm going to wholesale the property, blah, blah, blah. It just costs a lot of conflict. It raises a lot of flag. It raises a lot of questions. I I'm just saying it's cool that you found a seller that are able to, it's okay with that. But I'm just saying the wording uh, needs to, you know, needs to be a little bit better. You can tell them, hey, l listen. So typically what we do, you know, once oh, once we come to an agreement, we put the property, uh, once we come to an agreement and we have execute uh, an agreement, um, you know, typically uh, I either move forward, you know, we either move forward to buy the property or I typically we have one of our partners that actually comes in and doing a joint venture with us or maybe uh, they're going to be the one who buying the property. But my thing is we're going to get this done for you regardless. So that's typically how I would um how I would say it, not coming out and say, hey, you know what, when I put this property in a contract, I'm going to send it out to my buyers. I'm going to try to find a buyer for the deal, blah, blah, blah. It just raised a lot of flag. And also, too, is um, it, it also crossed the legal line as well, because now you are basically trying to be an agent instead of being an investor's. Mm. All right. So I want you guys to understand, you know, when you explain things, just make sure that they understand that you are a potential buyer, which is right. You work with a group of partners, which yes, that's sir. what we're doing. OK, so always make sure that you when you talk to them, that you are a potential buyer, that you are interested in buying this property. All right. So you're like, hey, typically, you know, me or one of my partners will move forward to buy the property. Um, whether we take, you know, sometime we'll take it, uh, 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 you know, sometime I'll get some, just like you explained, sometime I'll get, uh, some, 
I work with a harmony lender so we can get this thing done or one of my partner will step in um, and get this done. But regardless, regardless we're going to get this done for you. Okay. Yes, so sir. I yes, would, sir. I wouldn't use the word um, wholesale or, Hey, I'm going to put this prop in a contract and then I'm going to market. And I'm going to try to find a buy for this deal. So I wouldn't come off saying like that, but okay. then so position yourself is whether you or one of your partner is going to move forward to buy the property. Yes, sir. Okay, okay good. So, um, um, e my man, um, any last thing that you want to say to the viewer that are, you know, starting out, uh, cause I get a lot of truck driver as well, man, that are spending a lot of time on the road and they want to succeed at this as well. And it's crazy. I mean, like this interview, I'm, I'm in my truck right now. <laughs> um, my only, I, I like, you know, it's funny cause I'm putting this thing on, 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 on Facebook and I'm getting people who wants me to. To either joint venture with them or 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 teach them, and I say, I'm just starting out. I'm just, I'm not. I can't teach anyone. But I, the thing I I can say, and I want to say to people out there who's doing this, who may don't think they have the time to do it. Listen, if I'm a truck driver working 40, 50 hours a week, and and I'm doing it, you can do it. I don't want to sound clicheish, but you can do it. It can be done. Um, you just have to find the time and put the effort in it and stay persistent and consistent and the deals will come trust me like i just closed this deal and i'm like yeah i'm allowed him off the next one the, that on that seller called me back and he's ready to sell me another property so you know i'm hoping to get that property in the contract too so he said give him at least two weeks so he can um renovate the first floor because that for first floor is 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 uh is vacant too but the, the last people who was in it put like damage to put holes in the wall yeah. and he wants to just you know renovate right. it but he definitely wants me to you know wholesale that one also okay good man how much are you gonna potentially make on that one um i'm i'm hoping i'm praying god bless uh between 30 and 40 Woo! i wish you bro K. dude i wish you the best of luck man and uh, listen yes, you know so those of you who's watching consistent being persistent staying committed is the key and um it only takes one deal one That's deal it. To change your entire life, okay? It takes one deal, whether it's it's a two thousand dollar deal or a twenty five thousand dollar deal, but it it's it's that first deal that will change your life because everything becomes real to you. You know, you're, you're yes. confident, your belief will just skyrocket. You know that you can basically now you know the process. You know exactly how it works, and you can just duplicate. You know you can do yes, it again and yes. again and again. It all comes down to a matter of time yes, and, and putting in the effort and the work. So, anyways, man, I want to say congrats. And for hey, those I of you, you yeah. Dude, for those for those of you, you have any questions, you want to text me directly, shoot me a text over to 1-206-208-0676 with any questions or anything you want to text me personally. Um, just shoot me a text right there. So, Iman, man, I want to say thank you so much for the love, for the Appreciate support you. and coming on Appreciate here you. and uh, sharing with everyone, man. Thank you so much, dude. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yep. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, yep. you too.